The holiday season is known for bringing family and friends together and creating happy memories. But for some, holiday memories are surrounded by tragedy. This month, we will be sharing one unsolved missing person story every single day. We hope sharing their story will help bring them home for the holidays. LaQuanta Nichelle Riley was born February 26th of 1984. You may remember this case from last season when Whitney covered it for the state of Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama, to be more specific. LaQuanta was taken in and raised by her aunt, Katie Smith, because of her mother's young age. But her mother was still very much a part of her life. LaQuanta was smart, bubbly, and a well-liked young woman. She loved cooking and music and was even in the band in both middle and high school where she played the clarinet. La Quanta was also skilled in academics, and at her eighth grade graduation, she was named valedictorian, so a very smart girl. She graduated with honors from Redden High School in Stone Mountain, Georgia in 2002. Because of her amazing grades and extracurricular activities, she earned a full scholarship to college where her goal was to pursue a career in forensic science and criminal justice. LaQuanta moved away to college and moved into an apartment with a friend. But by Thanksgiving, something happens with this friendship and LaQuanta no longer wants to live with this friend. We have never heard or been able to figure out what this fight or disagreement was about, but LaQuanta does move back home and back in with her aunt. On December 5th, she makes a trip back to the apartment to get the rest of her belongings. And then on December 7th of 2003, around 11.30 p.m., LaQuanta leaves her aunt's house in a dark, green four-door vehicle. She is wearing a yellow and green Echo brand shirt, blue jeans, and green and yellow Reebok tennis shoes. The driver then takes her to her mom's house, only about three miles down the road. She needed to grab a jacket. This is December. Regardless if it's Alabama or not, it's a little chilly. Absolutely. Her younger brother, answers the door and asks her questions about who she's with. We know little brothers. They're invasive, intrusive. They want to know what's going on. His older sister has like such a glamorous, fun life. She's just going to hang out with friends. So, of course, the brother's nosy. The driver is waiting in the vehicle while LaQuanta goes in and grabs her jacket. Her brother states he's never seen this car before, doesn't know the person. So he continues to ask her questions like the entire time. What are you doing? Who are you with? Where are you, what's all happening? LaQuanta just tells him it's a friend she met around the neighborhood, and that's basically it. But this is the last time that anyone from her family would see. LaQuanta's mother would receive a disturbing message a few days later, left on the home answering machine. The type with the little tapes, not these technologically advanced voicemails we have now where it literally writes out the entire message and you don't even have to listen to it, which is what I do when I get a voicemail. Exactly. That I don't, I prefer to read it as opposed to listen to it. Hey, same. Whoever called and left this message, she thinks it sounds like LaQuanta and they're saying, let me go home or leave me alone. I can totally see how those two would could be mistaken for one another. They're very close. And they definitely have the same kind of cadence, exactly. the same amount of syllables, that sort of thing. I can see where it'd be easily mistaken. One thing that the mom was certain of was that there was a male in the background that said La Quanta. And that's a very specific, unusual name not a lot of people have. Now, if they said Jessica, that I wouldn't immediately think, oh, yeah, that's my daughter, because there's literally 500 million Jessicas. But LaQuanta, that's... Or, I'm sorry, but yes, LaQuanta, that's a very unique name. But also, it's not like saying Aaron, and it sounds like a word, errand, like running errands. It's not, there's no, 
word that sounds similar to it that it could easily be mistaken for. Yes. Or we got the like the Jadens, the Haydens, the Bradens, all of those. Like LaQuanta mm-hmm. is LaQuanta all on its own. And then this call disconnects like right after they, she hears the word LaQuanta. A missing persons report is filed, but since LaQuanta is an adult and there's nothing that looks like foul play so far, police are essentially just keeping an eye out for her, but not actively looking for her. If she happens to come in or get pulled over or something like that, yeah, then they'll say something, but they're not going out of their way to do anything. Police discover an apartment in LaQuanta's name in the town that she went to high school in. This is not where the aunt lives, though, so it's very weird that now she all of a sudden has this apartment in her name. Her mother goes to these apartments, talks with the manager, who tells her that LaQuanta just moved out a few days before then. And this is where the missing person case goes cold. That's all they have. LaQuanta could possibly have an apartment, But I'm sorry, if anybody has had their identity stolen, do you know how Mm -hmm. easy it would be for someone to just get an apartment in someone else's name? I'm sorry, it's happened. Nobody's got an apartment in my name, but they've taken out credit cards or created bank accounts, all Mm -hmm. especially if you know the person, which is crappy enough to think about. At the very least, they've filled out some sort of application with your identity. Exactly. Very few tips and even less leads came in, and no one knows where LaQuanta is. And this has been 18 years since she disappeared and had no contact with her family. It just seems very strange that someone would never reappear if she wanted to get away for a while and then come back. I just, I don't see her just disappearing when she had that much family She was going to college. She was a smart girl that was involved. And she was ambitious. She had plans for the future. She wasn't trying to figure out who she was anymore. She knew what she wanted to do with her life. She did. And she had a family that supported her through this. At the time LaQuanta went missing, she was described as an African-American female with black hair and brown eyes. She stood about five feet, eight inches tall, and she weighed about 200 pounds. She had pierced ears and a pierced tongue with a silver barbell. She also had a scar on her nose and a couple of tattoos. One happened to be on her left arm, the words R.I.P. Misha, and then she had her own name on her right arm. No word or sign of LaQuanta has been seen since that day she left in that green vehicle. I know you covered this one, so it's probably very close to your heart. And Whitney's episode has so much more in depth, but this is the Home for the Holidays episode. We wanted to put it out there because this one could be solved. Someone had to have seen her in 18 years if she was still alive and out there. And I really think that Police didn't investigate it as well as they should have at the beginning. They didn't take it seriously as a missing person, which that's the running theme. Running theme with missing people is they immediately go to run away. Not every single person in the world runs away. If every person in the world ran away, then we wouldn't have missing people or we wouldn't have murders. There's, it just doesn't make sense for it to just be a runaway situation. But then also add on the fact that LaQuanta was a black woman throws the stakes a little bit higher where they're really not going to look. Why did Mm -hmm. the mom have to go into the apartment and ask questions? Why didn't the police do that? And Um, there's more there's more evidence of foul play here than her just running away because we've got the phone call, which I mean, take it as you will. Some may say that it was wishful thinking that her that they heard the LaQuanta's name, which it, like you said, it's too unique of a name to be mistaken for anything else. Then there's the apartment that's in her name, which she wasn't even planning on living back in that area. So why, is, why does someone suddenly have her name on some paperwork there? There's just too many red flags to be labeled as a runaway. I completely agree. Completely. And she had no reason to run away. She was just figuring things out. Why would you run away? And... Okay, this is always my thing. If 
it was a runaway, why wouldn't the person in the green car come forward and say, hey, yeah, I was with her last. So this is where I took her. I want to help find her. I had nothing to do with this, but I want to help the family. It always, it's so suspicious to me when people do not come forward. If they had nothing to do with it, what is the problem with coming forward and at least giving a, another timeline because no one in her family saw her after she left getting her jacket. So why wouldn't that person come forward? Okay. She also told her brother that this person was someone from the neighborhood. How difficult would it have been to check all the green, first of mm -hmm. all, vehicles in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. I feel like that would have been an easy, quick 10-minute search. And if I remember, green's not a super common color on green? vehicles. Well, It'd be different if it's white or red or black. Like those are the most common colors of vehicles. Just a little information about me. My very first car was green. Oh. <laughs> when I was 16 years old, it was oh. green. So weird. That's going to be on trivia one day. One day, yes. But yeah, very weird. Okay. But she only took a jacket. Like if she was going somewhere for even an extended period of time, if she knew she was going to be back until the next day, wouldn't she have taken more than just her jacket? Yes. I just, I do not understand when police or people think that it's so easy to disappear. If you have any information about what happened to LaQuanta Riley, please call the Montgomery Police Department at 334-241-2350. Apparently, this is just one she had her whole life ahead of her.